Oh, shalom, 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 my brothers and sisters. I want to touch on um, the proof, the proof of the resurrection of our similar, 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 similar. Yes, I. This is to touch on <clears throat> the proof of the resurrection of our Godfather, Kedemawi Haile Selassie, Christ in his kingly character. What is the proof of the resurrection of our Godfather, the King of Kings? Well, the fact that the essence, the essence of Rastafari, it survives amongst I and I and I, the Rastafarians, is proof in itself of the resurrection and immortality of His Imperial Majesty Kedamawi Haile Selassie. That is the proof, my brothers and sisters. I and I is the proof. I and I is the truth concerning Haile Selassie. So to the liars and dissemblers and the evil speakers, we got a message. Because many people say, well, there's two views of His Majesty. There is, there is one, the view that some choose to view His Majesty as a symbol of oppression, you understand, while there are others who take a more spiritual or eritical interpretation of Kedamawi Haile Selassie, and he for I and I becomes a symbol of redemption, because he is our kinsman redeemer as the once lost but now found Beta Israel. But this truth, this, this amazing truth, this earth-shaking and earth-shattering truth has been suppressed, has been downpressed, lies and slanders and all sort of folly and conspiracies has been sold against His Imperial Majesty. But the proof is in the truth. And the good news of his Majesty, which is the true gospel of our Black Lord and Savior, Jesus Christos. It has the keys for us to answer these and those, and to walk the way, the truth, and in the life of the King of Kings, because He is I and I light. He is the symbol of I and I salvation. He's the symbol of the Word of Christ manifest in this time. And it's only because of racism, white supremacy, and all the lies and, and all the, the, the anti-Christ, the hard speeches, as the Bible says it best. In fact, let's get to the Word. My brothers and sisters, grab your pen and your paper and your sacred scripture and bring a willing and attentive mind ready to receive the half of the story not told since our ancestors, the once lost but now found Beta Israel, were brought to this new world to fulfill Deuteronomy chapter 28 verses 15 to 68, circa 1530 A.D. So grab your pen and your papers and sacred scripture, my brothers and sisters, and let us touch on the proof, first of all. First of all, the proof concerning the resurrection of Haile Selassie. Now, we could point to Abu Qadus. That is another sign and symbol and a testimony, a positive testimony. And there are many witnesses at home and abroad, Ethiopians at home, Ethiopians abroad, and even others who know that truly, Yahai, Yahai, that Jah lives, children, Yea, Jah lives. But the main proof of that truth, that sacred truth, is I and I, and is the movement that is known by our namesake as Aras Tefari, because this movement fulfills what Revelation, what Re Revelation was prophesizing and foretelling a future. A significant part of that future that Revelation was telling has been fulfilled, even in our very time, and the fulfillment, it is still ongoing, my brothers and sisters. But <clears throat> there are others who view His Majesty as a symbol of oppression. Some say He was a tyrant. 
Some say he was a dictator. Some blame him for famine and, and all sort of things. Is there any truth to it? Well, they believe that there's a truth to it. But they have yet to present us with any significant proof to their lies, to their rumors, to their envy, to their ignorance, and to their error. But I and I must continue to preach and teach the good news of his imperial majesty. That is the rightful responsibility of all of us as Arastafari. So if you are called to this way, truth, and life known as Arastafari in and through the name of our black Lord and Savior, Yeshua Ha Moshiach, Gietachina, Mehanatachin, Jesus Christos, to the glory of our Father Kedus, Avatachin, Abba Kedus, then ones need to learn the half of the story that hasn't been told. And for I and I part, this is why we minister. This is why we're very pleased to announce this particular publication, which is the Gospel of HIM, Haile Selassie, Book One. And y'all willing, there are more books to come. So get your copy today, my brothers and sisters. But here in the book of Jude is something very interesting to those who would lie and dissemble against his majesty. Because it's it's it seems amazing. But once you become acquainted with the word, you see how prophetic it is, exactly everything that has happened, not just in 1930, but that's the beginning. Really, the beginning is 1892, because when did Columbus come to the New World? We could put this up there. This is math, too. Put this down. Columbus discovered the so-called, quote-unquote, New World in what? 1492, right? And that's when this region and hemisphere came under racism or white supremacy. Now, this is the land that is not ours. Now, many would say we have a presence here, but still, there's a land that was given to us as Beta Israel, as Israelites, as Hebrews, and even as Ethiopian Hebrews in this prophetic fulfillment. Amos 9 and 7, aren't you like the children of the Ethiopians unto me, O children of Israel? Yes, there are careless Ethiopians, and many of those careless Ethiopians have and will be slain by Yahweh's sword. This is Zechariah, or Zephaniah actually, Zephaniah chapter 2, verse 12. Ye Ethiopians also shall be slain by my sword. So the Father is non-partial. Let's, let's recognize that. Just because it says that about the Ethiopians, those careless Ethiopians, don't ignore the other positive verses of prophecy. But if you don't understand and study history, which is really our story, quote, historically, if you don't understand that half of the story, then when you read this Bible, some aspects is closed because of that ignorance. But if you recognize history, the full history, not pick and choose what you might like, you see, this is what we're going to address and deal with these two views of his imperial majesty, the love and hate of Haile Selassie or against his imperial majesty. Our world. Now, first of all, let's just go to Jude for a moment. Now, Jude is very interesting because Jude speaks of this are historical instances of apostasy. Apostasy means falling away. What we witness in Ethiopia some, what is it, 36 years ago, roughly 36 or so years ago, what was this revolution, the Ethiopian revolution called? It was called the creeping coup. The creeping, what creeps? Snakes, serpent, the creeping things creep. Now, most folks, if they are spiritually grounded and they knew nothing else and they knew his majesty is that Davidic Solomonic king, if they understand and recognize the throne of David has been established and the kingdom of David has been established in Ethiopia, if they know that the throne of David, scripturally, biblically, is called the throne of Jehovah, the throne of Yahweh, and recognize his imperial majesty's title. He was anointed. Anointed means to be christened, which means to become a Moshiach. You see, 
in Beta Israel, in our way of life, when we know our way of life, it is kings who are anointed, it is priests who are anointed, and also it is prophets who are anointed. Now, the connection between old Israel and imperial or holy Ethiopia, and I make a distinction between the Ethiopia over there today. The Ethiopia over in the East today is not holy Ethiopia in truth. The foundation is still there. But we have to, those things were torn down, just as Amos talks about building up again. You see, and that is going to be left to those of us who are overcomers to build up, you understand, and to raise again the foundations, you understand, of David, which were thrown down. But here in the book of Jude, it says that there are historical instances of apostasy, of apostasy, and goes all the way back to the very beginning, you understand, because it's as it was in the beginning, so shall it be in the end. And here, it speaks about those who would, as it says, speak evil of those things which they know not. Most who speak evil of his imperial majesty don't even know the half of the story concerning his imperial majesty.